Hey everybody, it is Kendall Anise and welcome to Kendall Anise Live. I'm excited about this episode because I have the amazing Hugh Williams of Hugh Williams Photography. He is out of Baltimore, but he's just not limited to Baltimore. If you've seen my recent pictures that I uh, use for my promos, he took those shots. He took my brothers, Dr. Leroy McKenzie Jr.'s. So many amazing shots. If you go on his social media, which he'll tell you about, you'll see his portfolio right there in living color. Now, it's not easy to capture someone's best side, if you will. It's not always easy to bring out uh, their inner person so you can see them and it can reflect who they really are in a photo. So we'll talk about how Hugh Williams does that, but we're going to get into the mind of him. We're not just going to talk about photography. Uh, well, we will, but that's not all you'll get for this episode. So welcome to Kendall Anise Live. Without further ado, I want to welcome my guest to Kendall and East Live, Mr. Hugh Williams of Hugh Williams Photography. Yay! Hey, hey, how you doing? <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome to Kendall and East Live. How are you, Hugh? I'm good. I can't really complain. You can't? I love nope. it. So what you I'm gonna give a moment for you to, if you want to send this to people so they can watch your interview live, you can do that. Okay. Now I'll tag you. And if you want to send it, uh, let's give that opportunity. So, so your people can see you. Okay. So let's see. And then we are going to get started. So I put it on my um, Facebook. You can share it that way. And I'll also send it directly to you so you can get that. Okay. Sounds good. All right. So how are you? I know you uh, said you can't complain, but what's going on? What's new? What's good? Man, just trying to figure out how to just keep reinventing myself. You know what I mean? I think that's the name of the game. Just figuring out how to reinvent yourself. And um, the rest, you know, is history after that. So let's get to that. Let's just jump right in. Um, so this is Hugh Williams of Hugh Williams Photography. As I stated, he is an extraordinary uh, photographer, even more extraordinary human being. And let's just jump in to reinventing yourself. What did you mean by that, that you're trying to reinvent yourself and that's what you continue to do? Um, well, it's, it's, it's been a journey, really. Um, I've been doing photography for several years now, but I, I I believe that I've taken it more seriously since COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, COVID um, a lot of changes happened where, you know, I was displaced work-wise and mm -hmm. just a lot of things, uncontrollable things happened. Mm -hmm. and I think it just clicked at that time that I really wanted to try to take my photography uh, more seriously mm -hmm. and just, just move within that direction. Whereas before, I was doing it, but it was just like a casual part-time thing. Sometimes I would do weddings. Sometimes I would do different things, but it was kind of like my toe was in the water, but I, I wasn't really like going aggressively into it. Yeah. Why do you think so? Is it because you had a full-time gig? Yeah. I mean, I feel like, you know, sometimes when you, you start a business, you're not really sure how it's going to go. Mm-hmm kind of lean more on your regular job and you mm -hmm. kind of, you kind of pace yourself, excuse me, to just see how things go. Yeah. But, you know, when uh, the pandemic happened, um, you know, uh, I lost a couple friends, you know, I had it real bad myself too. Um, and it, it was just kind of like a, a wake up call. Whereas, you know what, we, sometimes you really need to just put yourself out there and just see what you're made of. And, 
you know, and just to see how much people love you or want to support you. So I've been lucky that, you know, so far I've been getting support. I'm still building on it, trying to do some things that I've never done before. But um, I think that that was the biggest thing, just just trying to um, just go out, get out of what's comfortable. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that and that's perspective because a lot of people were realizing that life was a gift, even though people knew life was a gift and it is a gift. I think the, think the pandemic showed people that we're not here forever, you know, and there is sickness out there and and it's time to start living your life like on purpose, you know, Absolutely. and doing what you love to do, because it's really important to feed your soul and your spirit with things that you love to do. And photography being a love, um, I think it changed the game when it came to hustle and bustle and working for this entity. It right. was more like, what brings me joy? And did you feel like it circled back? And we're going to talk about what else you did during the pandemic too, but um, we're going to circle back to that. But did you feel like, um, did you feel a different lease on life during the COVID? Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like the pandemic allowed me to remember who I am. And sometimes, mm. you know, when we work, you know, sometimes the job becomes our identity and really mm -hmm. a job should never be an identity. It should be, you know, it should be a means of you being able to, um, you know, build yourself financially or to take care of your bills, but it should yeah. never be your identity. Um, yeah. I feel like when the pandemic happened and I was temporarily uh, away from my job, it allowed me to just kind of remember who I am. And, you know, I consider myself an artist. I mean, I don't just, photography is a main thing that I do, but I also write, I also do large scale painting. So I consider myself like an artist. And um, it, it was yeah. just time for me to kind of remember that. Yeah. Cause you're a creative being. I can understand that. Cause I'm, I'm, I'm a creative type person, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, when, I see other creatives. It's like you get your creativity out. It's, it, it's cathartic. You know, it's a form of therapy, like painting and writing and photography, because I love photography, too. I'm, I have an eye um, that I like when it comes to seeing. I see a lot of things in pictures. Like if I'm driving down the street, I can see a beautiful photo and I snap it or I see somebody standing a certain way. I'm snapping it. Or if I see right. so my eye is very keen that way. And I know yours is is too. Um, when did you realize you had the love for photography? How old um, were you? It's a funny story. I kind of stumbled into it. So back in the day when i was in college many moons ago i'm not gonna say my age you know my day birthday's coming up within a week but many Ooh, moons, happy birthday thank you, thank you thank you so many moons ago you know i took up photography in college you know what i mean and i did it as an elective you know and i you know i passed it but it wasn't like i was passionate about it but i remember um there was a friend of mine who had like uh like a little talent slash modeling agency. And she had paid this ridiculous amount of money to this guy to, you know, fulfill doing some pictures for the kids that she had. And they were absolutely horrible. Um, and at the time I just bought my first Nikon. I barely knew how to turn the thing on. Um, but I was like, you know, I looked at it and I felt so bad when I saw it. Cause I think she paid something crazy. Like, um, I think it was something like $500 per person. And the pictures were like really awful. And I was like, well, don't, let me shoot these over. And if you like these, you could pay me a fraction of what you paid this guy, you know? Um, but if, if you don't, then at least you have extra pictures. So it's a, it's a win-win for you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's how I started. And I just kind of, I'm self-taught you know, still evolving in the process. And, um, you know, now we're in the digital era with photography, so I'm still um, evolving within that process or whatever. But um, it's just been a journey of me stumbling into it. And then I realized that I really do like it at once I committed to it. Yeah. And it takes a special person to bring it. So how do you bring 
someone to life in their photos? Well, I think because even it, with me, people don't realize I'm shy. Yeah, so and you I, know when we're taking my pictures, it's hard for me. Like people would probably think I would be like, yeah, but it's so difficult to do that. Like if you, how do you bring who someone is? Like you see somebody, but you see a creative version of them. How do right. you bring someone to life in the photos? So I think the first thing that I do, because everybody, I mean, there's different levels to how, where people are like, there's some people who naturally mm -hmm. like to look at themselves. So therefore they can, they know what to do behind the camera. But then there's certain people that are good with talking with people, but then when they get behind the camera, they're like total introverts or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I think the key, you know, that I first try to do is to just make people comfortable. And then mm -hmm. something that you want to do anyway, because unfortunately there are some photographers that have kind of like really created a bad rap for other photographers by, mm -hmm. you know, not making people feel comfortable or just yeah. making Being things creepy. weird or whatever. Right. Creepy. So, right. So, you know, my first thing that I want people to do is I just want people to feel comfortable. Once they feel comfortable, sometimes I'll even tell people, hey, take a deep breath. You know, I'll try to turn on some music, whether it be R&B music, house music, whatever the let case. Me just say, let, me, let me stop you right there. Your, play, your, your playlist game, that playlist, I'm telling you. Oh, he Thanks. plays some good music. I kept stopping like, what is that? I was saying, let me Shazam that. I was telling my daughters to Shazam it because that playlist, honey, but go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but all of that is important because like I said, you know, I can meet very outgoing people that become in instantly introverted behind the camera. So that's my way of really kind of offsetting that because like I said, if I can't make you comfortable, then it's going to show in your pictures. So I want to make sure that, you know what I mean, that I'm, I definitely capture the essence of, of who you are. And now granted, everybody's not meant to be a supermodel, but I can at least bring people to, to, to really, you know, be who they are behind the camera mm -hmm. and capture the essence of who they are. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I think it's the eyes too. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That makes them kind of come alive. But with me, that's that's me. I'm kind of introverted in the camera. Even though I go on stage and talk to people and people are looking at me, it's different. It's different when you're now you have to. I don't know. It's different. And then it took a took a while, you know, and I think you did an amazing job with my photos and so many other photos. And you captured what was what was needed. So I'll definitely be back. And I already told you my daughter's coming. So we got, you know, we already got that. And originally I saw your um, photos from my brother, Dr. Leroy McKenzie Jr. And I was like, who? And then I met you at that mixer. I was like, who did these photos? And um, I haven't had professional photos done like that in a, in a long, it's been a minute. It's been a minute. And I knew instantly when I saw his, I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I need them, you know, for my book. I needed, you know, those photos for that. And you did an amazing job. And thank what's you. beautiful is, thank you're welcome. You don't try to break the bank either. No, no, no. And I, the, talk about that. Yeah, so my whole philosophy with that is, um, I'm not the cheapest guy in town, but I try to be, my, my whole philosophy is if I do a good job and I keep prices moderate, then I will maintain a customer for life. Because what I've found is that there's people that I've done work for and I may do work for them and I keep the pricing moderate, you know, not too low, but not necessarily too high either. And I find that though, those people, when something comes up, you know, it could be something where somebody, I had somebody call me recently, they wanted a, a new headshot for their LinkedIn page. And so I've done some realtors where they, you know, want headshots for their business cards, or whatever. So sometimes you could start off doing one thing and then people will just keep you in mind for other things. And then, like I said, it's, it's all about how you make people feel too. So if you make people feel comfortable and you give them a good product, then in my opinion, it's a good chance that they'll call you back. 
for sure. And like you said, you don't make it creepy because sometimes photographers can make it creepy, whether they make little comments or say things, especially for women. You know, it's it's uncomfortable sometimes when a male is um, your photographer and depending on what you're wearing or how you are, like they can make it an uncomfortable experience. They truly right. can. And I right. can honestly say you did it, you know, right. because you don't know what to expect. And, you know, originally I was like, well, I don't want to go alone. I asked my daughters because you don't know, because if you've had those experiences before, you don't know how it's going to be, you know, right. and then I have them because they're my cheerleaders and I know like I'm introverted in that way. And I need to, you know, come alive in a photo because nobody want to be looking dead in the photo because right. the whole point is like, you're bringing something out. And I think with your expertise and your personality, you did just that. And I'm sure I'm not the only client that would say that. How good does that make you feel when someone says, like, you made me comfortable? Was that ease? It was easy. How does it, that make you feel as a photographer? It makes me feel it makes me feel really good. I mean, like I said, I. Making somebody feel comfortable to me allows me to know that that person will probably come back. And, and that's that's very, very important to me. Um, like yeah. I said, you know, there's times where people do things or I've heard of, you know, horror stories from other people. And, um, you know, I just don't want to be that guy. And I've done all types of photography from wedding photography to uh, headshots to boudoir photography. I've done a little bit of everything. Um, but yeah. it because of that, you know, it's it's very important to keep maintain your professionalism and just, you know, just how you do things so that people don't associate you a certain way or make you make yeah. you feel a certain way. Our brothers on here, we just shouted you out, Leroy. Dr. Leroy McKenzie Jr. is on here. And I told yeah. him how bomb your photos were that I was like, Leroy, who did these photos? Y'all, you have my brother shocked. You know, his little poses. I said, okay. But um yeah. And that's, so do you find that you get most of your business by former clients or word of mouth or now with social media, people posting photos? Yeah. So it's, it's a combination of things. Um, so a lot of times what will happen is I'll do a job for somebody and then it gets posted, whether it be by me or by, or by the client and they, you know, people will like it. And as people are commenting, somebody I'll sometimes get a random person in my inbox and they'll be like well hey you know i saw what you did with such and such can you um can i schedule a shoot with you which is great because there's nothing like word of mouth yeah um then i have key people that help me get work too like i have a, a good friend of mine melroy shout out to melroy oh, he, yeah. uh, he always looked out for me um because you know he is a he's a connector you know what i mean he always connects people together so sometimes depending on what the situation is, he'll call me and be like, hey, I have this person, they need X, Y, Z done, can you can you do it? And I'll say, sure, you know, and I'll do that. So it's a combination, social media, I have key people that are always talking. And then now that we're beyond, you know, how the pandemic was, now I'm putting myself in position where I'm a little bit more, uh, I go out a little bit more. So as I connect with people, you know, I, I start to make some alliances, which is something that I should have been doing. But um, now that it's a little bit more safe to do it, I, I do it now. Yeah. And um, you definitely are the first one when, when if someone asks me or when they do that, you are going to be, you know, that person for me when someone asks me. And then when I start doing my workshops again uh, for my book writing workshops and different things like that, <clears throat> and they need to the author photo for sure. So you already know that our network is, is, is tight with that. And you okay. talked about putting um, pictures up. Yeah. I, you put my picture on social media before I saw it. So when I saw it, I was color purple, like hop on who that woman, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> cause you put it up and I was like, wait, Oh, okay. So we're doing that. It looks nice. I was, I was um, pleased. I was surprised and pleased at the, um, at the same time. Um, 
as you talked about earlier, you're a creative person and you do photography and you paint. Did you do the artwork behind you? Yeah, yeah. Um, these are smaller artwork, but um, I usually do like large scale paintings, like, you know, three or four foot size paintings. Oh. I would normally have stuff to show, but during the pandemic, as soon as I painted stuff, people wanted to buy it. I did like maybe That's about right. six, six pieces during the pandemic and I sold all of them. So and that's another Come on, thing. Come on, you. That's awesome. Thank you. So I, I, that's another thing that I'm going to try to make time for this year, too, is to just try to uh, explore doing artwork again, too. And maybe, I don't know if I can come up with enough pieces, maybe do a showing. I mean, I, I used to do it years ago. But, yeah. you know, like I said, you know, when you are working, sometimes you, the misfortune of working all the time is that sometimes you never see your higher self but now that i've made the conscious choice that you know i'm working and i have a part-time job but i work i do this and then you know my part-time job comes second um because i really am at a place where i really just want to explore who i am as a business person and as an entrepreneur and i think that that what takes does that time look like you? what does that look like for you um it's not easy because I mean, one of the misnomers that people don't realize is that you know, and I think it's the thing that that makes people scared about entrepreneurship too is that you really have to be on your A game all of the time, because you know when you are at a job, you know unless you do something really bad, more than likely you're going to have a check every week or every two weeks. Whereas, you know, as a business person you have to figure out ways to go above and beyond or even do new things so that you can capture different audiences. It's just like um, recently, um, I just did, uh, well, it wasn't just me, I shot, but I had a team of people that helped me uh, do a, a bridal shoot for a Baltimore Style Magazine. And I purposely did that because I wanted to try to capture you know, different audiences and bigger audiences so that mm -hmm. I can keep working, you know what I mean? So it's it's very strategic. When you're working for yourself, you gotta do strategic things to just keep yourself relevant. But at the same time, continue to give cuts, good customer service, to can continue to put yourself in a position to get good feedback and just all of those things. Yeah, I remember when you were telling me about um, the wedding uh, profile that you were doing for, for the magazine. And that's huge, right? Mm -hmm. What do you do when um, it's time? So give us a day in the life if you're doing a wedding shoot, because those photos were amazing. So just walk us through a wedding. Like how would that happen from the beginning to the end? They will call you and then all the way up to the day of the shoot just to give someone an idea because wedding season is approaching. True, true. So the, the easiest part is the beginning. You know, the easiest part is when you first, you know, you meet somebody and I, I have bridal books that I show people and, you know, they'll look at it and they'll decide, you know, that, you know, I'm going to do it. Um, but then the real work comes in at the day of the wedding because, you know, the average wedding can be anywhere between six to eight hours. Um, and a lot of times you're with the person, well, the bride you're with from the inception, from when the makeup artist is putting her makeup on and a bridesmaid's makeup on. Um, and you're pretty much there through the whole process. You know, a lot of times now, uh, most people are getting married all in one place. I mean, very rarely these days, people are going to a church and then to another venue. But so a lot of times it's all in one venue, but even within that, you know, there's the makeup, you know, which usually takes place at the person's home. Then you get to the venue, you know, you have to take pictures of, you know, the place before anybody, you know, starts sitting down so that they can remember what it looked like. And then, you know, you're taking the vows and then the reception and just everything in between. And then a lot of times they may have family or relatives that may be, um, you know, from out of town or whatever, or they may rarely see. So you got to capture all those things. And then you have to also capture the, the vibe of that day. So all mm -hmm. of that is kind of like what, what goes into it. Yeah. 
So what was some, as we wind down before we do our game, because on Candelanese Live with all my guests, I play a game called Know Me. So they're going to get to know you a little better. But um, what can someone expect from your photography that they may not get somewhere else when they hire a photographer? Um, what? is different from um from other photographers is that i really try to make it my point to get to know who i'm shooting you know what i mean not that i'm gonna call you up every five minutes or whatever but even in my initial conversation i want to get a feel for who you are because if i get a feel for who you are then i can kind of get an idea of what i can bring out photography wise and everybody's you know, everybody's comfortability level is different. Like even with Leroy, when I shot Leroy um, and uh, my friend Melroy had helped me with, with him, he had did some styling for him and Leroy was completely nervous. You would have never uh, known that um, in the shooting, but he, you know, but he, you know, he took direction well and he's a pretty laid back guy behind the camera. So you know, once he kind of got to feel that, you know, I knew what I was going to be doing. And like I said, Melroy was styling him as well. Everything just kind of flowed a certain way. So those elements are like really, really important. Like I said, getting to know the person and just making them feel comfortable because there's some people who just have a format and they're just doing whatever to get the, get it done and get them, get them out. Yes. But I kind of work in a different way. Yeah. So what did you learn about me and what were you surprised about when we did the shoot? I I think the thing that I discovered about you is the podcast you and the in-person you are two different people. <laughs> um, but not in the best. Explain that. Explain it. Leroy said uh, he was. Um, <laughs> yeah. Sometimes people um, get uh, nervous behind a camera. So, you know, um, so it, I think it was just the learning curve of just making sure that you felt comfortable. And I think between me and I think your daughter was there too, you just kind of got into a rhythm and everything was good. But I, I realized that you're kind of like an onion. You have different layers to you, you know, who you are uh, as a podcaster may be different between who you are behind a camera. But overall, I think that you're a good artist. Oh. Thank you. I appreciate that. I know people don't, when I tell people I'm really shy or introvert because they see me doing all of this, they'd be like, no, it's not true. But you can attest that it's true, right? Yeah, I can. I can. See? I can. Leroy said, let's see what he says. I'll put it up there. He made me feel very comfortable. He was awesome. So that's another thumbs up that y'all got to hire <laughs> Hugh. Let me tell you, birthday parties weddings, bar mitzvahs. You ain't discriminating, right? Um, no, outdoor shoots, indoor shoots, brand photos, social media photos. He said realtor photos, LinkedIn profile photos. I mean, think about it. We're in a day and age that we need photos for everything. Absolutely. We yeah. need photos for everything. And why not hire Hugh? Is if you're in the Baltimore area and Hugh got a car, he could get on a plane, he could travel, he could talk about that to y'all. But he's out, he's based out of Baltimore, but he's not limited to Baltimore, right? No, I mean, as a matter of fact, um, just this summer, I did uh, my first destination uh, wedding, and that was in Jamaica. That was great, actually. You know, um, so you know, I'm willing to go almost everywhere. Say almost everywhere. And he is Jamaican, right? You Jamaican, right? Man, yes, man. Yeah, because he was bragging when he went to Jamaica. He was like, oh, I can't do this show right now because I'm in Jamaica. Where I was oh. something, you were like, because I'm in Jamaica. <laughs> I was like, forget you. Uh -huh. But also, I have a surprise for Hugh, even though he. Oh, my book. So. Now, I'm a colon cancer survivor, and March is my anniversary. And that's when I'm going to start this 180 Days, the Book of Affirmations by Hugh Williams. Now, we have to support one another. So when he did my photos, 
I bought this the same day he did my photos and he was able to sign it for me. So I think it's, it's important to support one another when it comes to our gifts and our talents and our entrepreneurship. How important is it? And then we're going to um, wind down because we're um, at the end. Quickly, tell the people, you told me how this came about during the pandemic. Yeah, so that was interesting too. So um, I remember when the pandemic first happened, it was a lot of weird stuff going on at the same time. So I uh, was temporarily laid off from my job. Um, I just went through a divorce. Um, and just and then uh, when COVID first happened, when I didn't even understand what it was, I lost one of my best friends in life um, to COVID. Um, so it was just a very dark time. And I found myself writing a lot. And then even when I wasn't writing, sometimes I would go on social media, not necessarily to see what people are doing, but you know, every now and again, people would put like little quotes or little positive things. And I would really like comment on those things because those things help put my mind in a, in a certain place. And I was like, well, you know, I, and so then I started looking at some of the stuff that I was writing and I was like, well, maybe, maybe I need to do something with this. So I just continued. And originally the original idea was, uh, the original book was going to be called 360. Um, but after I got to 180 of the affirmations, I was like, you know what, maybe, maybe this should be put out. I said, I could always put a, a second edition of, of this book, but um, maybe I could just leave it the way it is. And that's what I did. I just, it was just a pouring out of different thoughts, you know, and I put it in a journalistic format where people can, you know, respond to it or, and make their own, because the whole thing is not, is, is more than just um, a book. I wanted it to be interactive where people could write down their thoughts and yeah. then they could just be in a healthier place uh, within that 180 yeah. days. Let me give an example. Um, day 20, 120 is on page 120 and it says oxygen. Communication is the oxygen that allows us to breathe in a relationship. You ain't lying. Then you can write your thoughts right here. Then it's um, peace and understanding. Peace and understanding should always be friends. Both are past codes to freedom. That's deep. Pictures. Sometimes the pictures that we create in our head versus the pictures that life has created are two different things. Perception. Perception is one of my favorite words. Um, perception. Dig deeper than the surface of perfection. Remember when salt and sugar are poured out, they both look the same. I love that. I say that to this deep and that's yeah. perception. So definitely tell the people quickly how they can get your book and how they can get in touch with you for your photography services. We're going to play the game and then we're going to roll out. Okay. So in regard to the book, the book is on Amazon. Um, we, if you wanted to, you can get the digital copy at copy as well as a hard, uh, hard copy. Um, I do also have a, another site called PayHip, but that's for the digital copy uh, uh, only. So I think the best probably bet would be to go to Amazon. Um, in regards to my photography, um, I'm pretty flexible. A person can inbox me on, on Facebook, or if they want to go to Hugh Williams underscore photography, they can um, hit me up on, on Instagram, and I'm usually always open for business. All right. Well, you know, I'll be seeing you soon uh, with my daughter. We talk that we'll talk about that after after this. So you ready for the game? You ready for it? No me. You ready? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. All right. Let's get it. So you're just going to answer. Don't give no explanations, no sentence after. You're just going to answer. You good with that? Mm-hmm. All right. This or that, breakfast or dinner? Dinner. Night owl or early bird? Night owl. Vacations, adventurous or relaxing? Adventurous. Okay. Hidden talent? 
Uh, hidden talent? Hmm. Uh, well, artwork. I mean, I, you know now, but most people don't know that I'm an artist as well. All right. Your top three movies, every time they come on, you're watching them. Um, Love Jones. Um, Leave where you here? The Usual Suspects. Mm. Um, and X, Malcolm X. Okay, all right. What makes you laugh out loud? Man, life, life, life is a parody within itself, man. <laughs> it you, sure you, is. If you look that at the song that makes you, that song that makes you dance every time you hear it. Uh, follow me. It's a house music song. <laughs> yep, follow. All right. What would people be surprised to know about you other than that you're an author and a painter as well? Um, people who don't know me would be surprised to know that I'm a serious househead. Like, I love house music. Um, I listen to reggae music, of course, because I'm West Indian. But, you know, I think that that's house music. I love house music. It keeps, keeps me going when I clean my house, when I do phot photography, whatever. I love house music. All right. Last question. Using the first letter of your first name, describe you. One word. Um, hmm. Honorable. Honorable. I love that. Everybody, this is Hugh Williams of Hugh Williams Photography. Please get in contact with him and make sure you support him with his 100 day, 180 days uh, book of affirmations. Hugh, thank you so much for joining me on Kendalanese Live. I so appreciate you. Oh, no problem. No problem. Thank you. Last word. What brings you joy? Um, what brings me joy is bringing out the best in other people that... Uh, especially behind a camera because a lot of times people you know don't even realize you know uh who they are you know what i mean and then when they see a different version of themselves or you know i capture something that they didn't know was there and people are happy that brings me joy there you go that's hugh williams everybody make sure you follow him on all social media platforms hugh hugh williams photography on ig correct yep all right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching Candelanese Live. It's important that you subscribe to my channel, comment in this video, like it and share it. Don't forget that you are a star. So don't allow anyone to dim your shine until next time. God bless. Peace, y'all. Bye, Hugh. Thank you. All right.